Hey everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Oh my goodness, we are on day nine. Day nine, guys, of the 12 days of quilting. <laughs> I always have to think about it. So today we're going straight back to the walking foot. And just so you know where we're going, this is what we're making. I realize this may be hard to see, so I'll throw a picture up here. Now I will tell you, um, I'm calling this a um, square swirl, because uh, we're swirling, swirling around like a square, okay? I did use 50 weight Orofil thread, but I'm using a uh, brown color. It's actually number 4012 that's in the shop. It's um, a nice, lovely color. I typically wouldn't do this, but I want you to be able to see it. So I did it on some orange fabric. Got my little practice sandwich going, which is exactly what you need. Now I will tell you again, this is a walking foot that we're doing this with. I recommend the machine gloves. Always do machine, machingers, machingers. Is that how you say it? <laughs> Whatever it is. Now to get this started, because I, I realize a lot of you get anxious um, if there's no real good place to start. So what I did is I took a ruler and a marking tool just to get the center started. And I'll show you how I did that. It's not necessary, but if you're still unsure, grab your practice sandwich, a ruler and a marking pen, and let me show you how to get it started and then how we get this quilted. See you guys in just a sec. Okay, I hope this is um, not confusing, but I know that some of you are new to quilting and um, you like a little reference lines or a little guidance and I wanted to give that to you. So with that motif I'm going to draw just a little bit to get started and I will say that my walking foot from needle to edge is about three-eighths of an inch. Whatever yours is you'd want an idea. Some are half an inch. I think mine's just a little bit skinnier than some. And on this particular sandwich, I'm just not even going to worry about finding the middle. I'm just going to pick a spot. And I'm going to start with a line of three eighths. Okay. Just so you know, this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight eighths is one inch. Two eighths is a quarter. 4 eighths is a half, 6 eighths is 3 quarter, okay? So I just drew myself a little line. Basically what we're doing is we're going to start a square. So then I'm going to line it up again on that 3 eighths ish. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And I'm going to draw another 3 eight line. Now typically what we're be looking at is drawing a square, right? Well, this time, instead of three eighths, I'm actually going to go I'm trying to decide the best way to show you to do this. Three eighths plus three plus three is six. So three eighths plus three eighths is six eighths, right? So I've got it lined up about the six eight mark. I'm going to draw a line out. All right. And let's see, one. One, two, three. Yep, I'm going to draw one more. Now, if I did it on three eighths, we'd be making a rectangle. So I am going to do it again on six eighths. Okay. And you can start to see how this spiral could happen. Now, that's all I'm going to draw. You could keep going if you so desire. If that is something that interests you, you could so keep going. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw some lines that go out from these points. And I'll explain them here in a little bit. Now, I wish I had a different pen that would show up. I'm going to pretend that this is closed. Okay. It's not, but we're going to pretend it is. That way it gives me some sort of a reference because we're working out of that square. So I would line up as if this was hitting that point of the square. And on this point, 
I'm just going to mark all the way out to the edge. Boom. Turn it this way. And I'm going to do the same thing. Now remember, when I'm lining up, I'm putting the ruler next to the place where my pen's going to go. Same down here. These actually are pretty darn close to each other. All right. All right. Let's see. Yep, that works pretty good. And I can go ahead and do it this way too. I'm going to turn it again. And I've got one more. And this basically lines up where this point would be. All right. And we'll draw a line out to there. Now, what these lines are, I probably should make them darker because this is disappearing ink. You know how I... I'll get in there and then it'll start disappearing. But um, basically, these are just references. Now, you can eyeball this. That's usually how I do this. But for those of you who are new, I wanted to show you how to give yourself some reference lines, okay? I'm going to do this one too. I just want to make sure to be able to see it for you. I don't, I'm hoping it'll show up in the camera. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna start stitching here, follow this line, turn at that point, follow this line, turn at this point, follow this line. When I get to here, I'm gonna turn, follow this line, and at this point, I should be able to stitch straight across and when I hit this line put your needle down and turn come across oh I'm marking all over this thing put your needle down and turn come across this line put your needle down and turn come across this line and it'll allow you to keep going further and further out so that you can build your spiral look okay so like I said you could mark your whole thing up but if you're just really wanting to get into some practice, because that's what we're doing, and you want to try it, and you don't want to eyeball it, there's some guidance for you, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera over to the sewing machine, and we'll get this started. I have decided to do something just a tad bit different. I'm going to use that white line. I'm going to go about, I don't know, halfway, eyeball it about and stitch down towards that first square before I go all the way around. I thought it might add a little bit to it. Now remember, you got to pull up your bobbin. So let me see about halfway, making sure I'm good to go. And it doesn't have to be exact, like I said. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up the bobbin thread, grab those trusty old whatever they're called here tweezers all right good to go now I want to put it back down about the place sorry my gloves are bothering me <laughs> about the place that I came out that's always helpful and to do that I'm just going to go ahead and lower my um, needle with my hand wheel all right, and I do have it in the, uh, the needle will stay down. And what we're going to do is we're going to go, what the heck does that look like? Okay, we're going to go to that corner. One more. Yes, I think so. Okay, it's not showing up inside yet. All right, let's see. Put my glasses on that might be helpful but I don't have them nearby okay so we're gonna go ahead and stitch along that line and when we get to that corner I'm gonna go ahead leave the needle down spin let me see what this looks like here for a second I'm trying to decide where am I I'm right where I need to be I think I got to go. Yep. All right. I, I can see it now. I don't know that you can. 
Um, but I'm going to those markings. If you these these lines in that corners, trying to get this um, started for us. And of course, I'm using a brown thread. Y'all are going to see every little wobble, every little thing. I don't typically sew with a dark thread on light fabric, but you can see I've made this point. I've made that point. So we're on a good we're on a good place right now. Okay does look a little crooked to me, but we'll see what happens. All right. I'm going to that point again. You can always lift your presser foot to take a peek. Leave your needle down. Now, we're going to just sew to this line, okay? To this line out here. When I get to that line, I'll make the turn. Now, you could bury your thread if you so desire um, that's sticking out right here. That would take too much time on our short time that we have. But, oh, I should check. Yep, I'm right on that line. So I'm going to go ahead, sew to the next line, make that turn. Did I go to the line? I did. It's interesting because... This one's going to be skinnier. All right, here we go. We got to that line. And you're just going to keep going around and around and around. Now see, okay, didn't go all the way. This is a good example of what it is and what I mean. Oh, I wish you could see this. So I'm going to have, I'm going to leave it, okay? Um, you all can't see that necessarily, but I didn't quite get to that line. So you can see what happened. And when I made that turn, and in fact, my foot was not lining up, that's how I knew it was going to be skinnier. I'm going to leave that um, because it's a very good reference for you to understand that um, you want to make sure you hit that line. <laughs> it will help. Um, keep the consistency and it's nice because what this point is doing what these lines are doing are giving you a reference right uh, I actually think I'm short and I am notice my foot's not all the way out so I'm going to go back okay go a little bit further oh I think I jig jagged Make a turn, better. And this, you'll just keep on going. All the way around. Now I'm gonna do some of this stitching off camera, but I am gonna come back, I think, at some point. Um, I think there's something else I may need to show you. And so I will get some more of this done, but just know, you just keep turning it. Go to the next line. Make sure you go to that point, and when you turn, you should be lined up. Okay. When you hit that line, leave it down, lift your presser foot. Now see, I, know, I knew I wasn't on the line, but see how my foot's not lining up very well? That's an indicator that I need to go just a little bit further, and I am way off the line actually. Make that turn. Nope, just a little bit more. Basically all you're gonna do, just keep on doing it around and around and around. Oh, and guess what guys? It's a walking foot, not a running foot. Didn't we talk about that last week? I'm still running. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna do some more of this off camera and I will get back at you in just a sec. All right, came back at you. Now, I wanna show you. You see that little too skinny, okay, that I decided I was gonna leave? If you're wondering how I would fix that if, I, if this wasn't a practice sandwich, 
I definitely either would rip it or I would make it happen periodically throughout because anytime you make a mistake, if you keep making it, it looks like it's supposed to be that way. So those are my two things. Now, remember, I didn't find a center. I didn't make sure anything was straight. So as far as my initial lines uh, along the fabric, my lines look really good. I mean, minus this one, right? Um, but it was a little cockeyed. So I came out to the end. Now I wanted to show you if in fact you were making a, um, a square type spiral here and you had sides that were longer, maybe you uh, were doing this inside of a rectangle. What you can actually do at this point is try to decide, I'm going to, I think I can get one more on this side. And I'm gonna do this with you for just a bit. So I'm going to line it up again along this edge of my walking foot. And I'm gonna start off in the, um, whatever that's called, batting. Whew. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get it started here. I think I have enough along this edge. Oh, look. Again, Angel, it's a walking foot, not a running foot. Nice, even stitches. <laughs> and I'm basically going to come down to this line like we were. And the other side is not, um, it's finished. So I'm going to show you what I would do. When I get there, just give me a hot minute. Okay, let me turn it. Now remember when you turn it, yep. What you always want to check for is to be sure that this line right here is lining up with your last stitch. That's why it's important to know how far apart your walking foot is when you get this started, if you don't eyeball it and you wanna draw some reference lines. Now I think I'm gonna call this one finished. Yeah, I'll do one more behind it, but what, we, what you will do you'll come on over it would the line would go outside to the batting which doesn't exist so I would just go outside the batting stitch enough out here nope that was too far now we're in the batting so we can just back it up here and I would stitch down again And I'll call this one done. I just wanted to show you in case um, you ran into this because if you were working in a rectangle, so your your fabric was longer one way and shorter on the other, what you would do to help with that. But that's all it is. So I'm just going to stitch right off and be done. And she don't look too bad. I mean, I got to hide this and of course that is not yummy. Got to love it. Now it'll stick out like a sore thumb because there's nothing else like that. Um, I really like this batting, by the way, it's um, got a, a high loft. I'm kind of liking it. Uh, but at any rate, um, these lines will all disappear in time. That is not a worry. If I was wanting to get rid of them a lot faster, you can wet it down and it'll help it go faster for you if you're using the air soluble slash water soluble disappearing ink. You can find those in our store if you're interested. Now that chalk I use, it's an iron off. 
I can't iron that until this is gone though because if you put the heat on here it kind of sets it and I don't want to do that so I'm going to wait till that's gone. I'm going to go ahead and bury these threads and I'll be back at you in just a second. Okay the square spiral. So here's the oopsie <laughs> with the one error. You know, when you make that turn, you want to make sure that your foot's lining up with the stitch you already did right there along the outside. And then I went ahead and redid another one. I'll throw the pictures up here. Yeah, this is so much fun, guys. And this is actually a very interesting motif. It's not hard, um, which is always a bonus. I don't think anything I did this these past uh, motifs in this series. I don't think any of them are hard. Uh, that may come next year that I have a little bit more of, um, we'll see if I do a little bit more like intermediate or not, but uh, you could certainly do this um, on your long arm. You could do it on your domestic. I can see it. It's a very interesting motif because I can see it definitely inside of a square and you could canter it a little bit to add some, um, funness, I guess. Uh, if you had like a square, you could tilt it. So it, you know, the outside is tilted and not necessarily straight. You could do this in a rectangle for sure. You know what I was thinking though, it would be a lot of sewing and it would take some time and, um, some focus, but you could do this all over. Like this could go definitely from the center of your quilt, working it out. Um, it just really depends on what kind of piecing, but if you love it and you think it look good, go for it. That's all that matters. When you're happy, everybody's happy. Um, you put the time and energy into that quilt, so um, you do what you want to do, boo-boo. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. But, <clears throat> yes, so that is square spirals, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> squirrely, squirrely spirals? Squirrel spirally? I don't know. You pick. But I hope you enjoy this series. Um, I will be back here tomorrow again. Yes, and of course, I will be back on Facebook Live, 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on our Facebook business page. Link for that is down below. I'm there for any live Q&A, live quilting and answer session. Would love to have you come on aboard. But 12 days of quilting, guys. We finished another, so I will definitely see you all soon. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you're finding inspiration. But until next time, or tomorrow, or today at 3 p.m., may y'all continue to be inspired, productive, and ever so joyful, and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. I love y'all. See y'all soon.